Hi, I'm Erin Larkin. Welcome back. Firstly, I have to apologise. It's been a really long time between videos. I've been super busy, but more to the point, my husband, who shoots the videos and does all the audio, has been busy making me this really cool um, wine storage system. Racks here, below, and the table as well. So instead of being behind the computer and editing like he normally is, he's been in the shed. So sorry about that, but we're back online now. We were just setting up to do a five in five under 30, which is um, kind of like returning home for me and I'm really excited to get into that. But before we did, I realized that I had a um, Lange Neb that I wanted to put through a decanter and I thought now's the perfect time because I've had so many questions around how to decant, what to decant in, why you decant. So this is the first in a little decanting series and today I'm only gonna focus on young wines and why we decant them. So normal, um, uh, candidates for decanting are like young Shiraz, young Cabernet, bigger, fuller bodied reds. And to decant those is a really, really brilliant way to cut to the chase. You know the wine's going to be beautiful by the end of the bottle, but if you don't want to wait that long, which I almost never do, then throw it in a decanter. What I have here is a slightly different red, but one that I think that will absolutely benefit from decanting. And it is a 2018 GD Vira Lange Rosso. It's from Piedmont, awesome producer. Um, this is a Nebbiolo Barbera Dolcetto with a splash of Freezer, sorry, Alba Rosso and Pinot Noir. I think this is absolutely gonna benefit from a decant. So what we need before we start decanting, because it can be messy, is a tea towel, preferably one that you don't really care about that's not a, an heirloom. You need a, a funnel. This can be anything. I use a really cheap one at home. I use a nice one at work. It really doesn't matter what you use. It's just about getting it back in the bottle because that's how I like to do it. You might like to pour from a decanter, but I don't like the mess. And then the decanter. So I've got a selection of three here. They're all Riedel. It really doesn't matter the brand, but I like Riedel decanters. I have um, a Riedel Magnum here, which holds two bottles and two single bottle decanters. Now, again, the pouring thing is an issue for me. I like how bottles pour rather than decanters. So that's why I choose to put them back, but you're free to do what you will. If you don't have a decanter and you're not really sure whether or not you want one, um, you can just use a jug and I've got a jug here. This would just absolutely do the trick. It's not as designed, it's not designed, sorry, for the swirling aspect, so it's not gonna do a nice job, but it will aerate the wine. So if that's what you're looking for, just use anything as long as it's clean. So I'm gonna use this big one. I like this decanter. I actually quite like how this pours, so this is what I'm gonna use. Okay, so it's in the decanter. Now, I decant lots of wines um, at a restaurant that I do events for and often we'll have, you know, 10 or 12 wines at a tasting and three or four bottles of each. So there's a lot of wine to open and a lot of wine to decant for us to know that we're showing it at its best. The way that I like to fast track the process because we're all able to open a bottle, leave it on the kitchen bench for three hours and drink it later, but who has the time? I don't. Um, a little trick is pouring it from decanter to decanter, a la. The process of pouring it between the two aerates it further, and I find this to be quite an effective way to do it. There is no magic number. The guy that I work with um, likes to do six times as a minimum. To me, I don't really have, I'm not structured like that. I will do it as many times as I feel like it needs it. Um, I'm gonna do it here for you twice, so back in. This, is, this can be where it gets messy if you get distracted. So try to stay on the ball. All right. Now, the other thing to know is when you're um, decanting red wine, the more tannic it is, the more bubbles will form. And this can cause a mess when you're pouring it back into the bottle. So just be aware of that. This is smelling pretty, um, it's gonna be aromatic anyway, but it's smelling pretty aromatic and kind of ready. And then, Drop this in here. Now, the, I always hold this slightly open so that there's air at the top of the bottle. If you don't do that, um, the wine gets stuck in the top of the funnel and it can spill out over the top. I mean, these are all things that you get used to, but I always hold it out just for a bit of airflow. That is how you decant a bottle of wine. Now, we do this for two reasons. In this case, we're doing it to aerate the wine and to, to get a bit of oxygen through it. That oxygen actually starts to decay the wine, which is what we want for our drinking pleasure in the short term. Um, it sort of 
allows the wine to open up in a quicker time than it would if we just opened it and used our glasses, which is another effective way of aerating a wine, but this is just a, a better, faster way of doing it. The other uh, reason why we decant, which I'll get into in the next video, is for an older wine to help take it off the sediment that has formed over time. Now that's a much more delicate process and one that I would warn you to enter into um, with much more care and, um, and time but we'll get into that in the next video. Um, the other thing that I have to ask you is whether or not you currently decant white wines. I'm a huge fan of decanting any white wine that has seen any amount of oak because I feel like that introduction to oxygen in its early stages of its life really make it quite um, amiable, amenable, amenable to oxygen later in its life. And the, the stark difference between two Chardonnays Two exact same Chardonnays, one decanted, one straight out of the fridge is just, it cannot be overstated. Um, so if you haven't already tried to decant Chardonnay, I would really recommend that you give it a crack. Just get two bottles of, um, like, a, like a, a rich Margaret River Chardonnay is a really good start because they're affordable, they're easy to get, and they'll really clearly um, illustrate what I'm trying to get at. So anyhow, I hope this has answered some of your early decanting questions around young wines. Join me for the next video when I look at old wines. It's going to be quite exciting. I've got an auction house on board who has been very generous in giving me some of their older wines. So they might be good, they might be rubbish, but we're going to find out together. Thanks for watching.